Hi everyone, welcome back to sort of a studio vlog type video. Um, today I wanted to do something a little bit different. I've been sort of into uh, loose florals a little bit more. I've been seeing more videos uh, in February of people doing those videos. So I thought I'd give it a try. Um, usually I'm not much of a loose painter, um, but I did have a little go at it and kind of try it out. And so I'll show you guys that right now. So I've got these um, papers here. And in here I did attempt to do some loose roses and just, you know, practice doing some florals and some different colors for leaves and things like that. And I actually really enjoyed it. So what I was thinking of trying to do the roses that I've been doing here, and but doing it on different papers. So I've got my arches hot pressed and cold pressed. I've got um, the Strathmore 500 series, hot pressed and cold pressed. And then I've also got the Etcher postcards here. And again, hot pressed and cold pressed. And so I thought I would just kind of do some loose florals on them, try it out. Um, if you guys want to see this video, let me know down in the comments below. Um, I will record it, but whether if it goes up or not, we'll see. I did record this, but this was more kind of for fun and to test out the um, cold pressed paper in here. So let me know if you want to see that as well. But uh, that's my plan for today. Okay, so here's some of those loose florals that I did to test out um, how these papers did. I quite like doing uh, the loose florals, so if you want to see more of that, uh, let me know. Because it's really fun, you just kind of splash some paint around, which is my favorite thing to do. And you kind of try to make, um, you know, an abstract rose or whatever flower. I want to try different flower types, so let me know. So I did these, and then I also decided to do another page um, in my etcher book. So I use the same techniques that I did in those other ones here, and I really like how these ones turned out. So I might do a video on this one, um, just because again, I was still playing around, but that's the fun of it. I used my Daniel Smith uh, watercolors for this, uh, because I find the colors that they have really lend to like landscapes and florals and things like that. So I might put this video out because I do like how that turned out, but if you wanna see more, um, loose florals or more watercolor stuff like that. Let me know down below because watercolor is the first medium that I started uh, to get into art and then I went to colored pencils. So watercolor is sort of my first love. Um, yeah, so let me know. What I think I'm going to do right now is I think I'm going to do a video on these. So these are the February uh, Smart Art Box and Palette Full Box. So I think I'm just going to open those, do a video on them, and then I can put that up in the next week or two also and I may just end up going through these ones now and I might just do a time lapse of it um, because I kind of just want to get rid of the boxes at this point and put some of the stuff that I have away because I don't even remember what everything is in those boxes so I think that's the next thing I'm going to do today it's sort of just a nice lazy day and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so I just finished um, the videos doing the swatches of the palette full packs and the Smart Art Box. And I always like to swatch everything out first. I really like how these um, Sakura Micron pigments went down. They laid down really nicely. So if you guys can think of anything um, for a little artwork that I can do to test these products out, um, yeah, let me know down below because I do want to try them, but I always like to swatch them out so I can have the swatches to refer to as I'm doing the artwork. But yeah, I would like to do something with both of those. And I think what I'm gonna do right now is actually um, take my M-Gram paints and take my new palette here and swatch these and set them up and all that. So um, I'll, I'll record this, but I'm not sure if it'll make it as like a video video. But if not, I'll do like a little time lapse in here. Okay, so these were the colors that I already had for the M Cram paints. And this is the 10 set that comes. It's sort of like the introductory, whatever, 10 set. And these are the colors that come with that. So you get Azo Yellow, Azo Orange, Pyrrole Red, Permanent Alizarin Crimson, Dioxazine Purple, Ultramarine Blue, Phalo Green, sap green, nickel quinacridone gold, I almost couldn't pronounce that, and burnt sienna. 
So I'm really glad that it just worked out that the colors that I already had aren't in this set. So that's why I decided to go ahead and get the, the 10 set paints. Um, because I've had these and I mean I've had sort of limited colors. Um, turquoise is one of my favorite colors. These are really pretty. Um, I just, I, I want to say I really like my Windsor & Newton and I really like my Daniel Smith. But there's something about these M. Graham paints. They're just really nice. So I figured it was time to make an official palette of them and put them into the rotation because I've only had, you know, so many colors and I sort of had limited choices. Um, so yeah, I haven't really used them for too many pieces, but yeah, so I'm just going to try to figure out what order I want them in. I did get a big palette in case I wanted to add more colors to my collection later on. Um, and if you'll, <laughs> if you notice, this is the exact same palette that I have for my Windsor Newton and for my um, Daniel Smith as well. And I love these palettes. They're really nice. Um, so this comes out. Well, this one's stuck in there right now, but this comes out so you have an extra mixing tray and you can always take this one out so you can go wash it out at the sink or you can take it out so that you can close your palette up once you're done and save your colors on here. I, I'm one of the weird ones. I hate having a messy palette. So you'll see whenever I start a new painting, I have a fresh new space because I hate getting um, muddy colors and I find if I just have a bunch of colors on here I tend to just get muddy colors because I'm not really sure what I'm mixing into. I can't remember what were the last colors that I was using. Um, so yeah I, I tend to wipe my palette off but uh, yeah so it's nice because you could still take it out close up your paint set you know let the palette dry and then put it back in so that you're not closing it up and then if it's wet you know you risk it uh, getting into your colors. So I really like that about it. I like that they're little um, scoops because I can put a little bit, bit of paint down here and then sort of, you know, have some space to mix or pull some color out, um, stuff like that. So I just really like these and they're cheap and expensive palettes. So I'll try to make sure I link um, the stuff, you know, that I use down below that I use the most often uh, for you guys, just in case you have any you know, inquiries about that. Look, I've already got cat hair on my swatch paper. So this is how I tend to do my swatches. So this is my Daniel Smith one. And I just tend to write all the names down and then I do like a, a heavy layer and then I sort of blend it out into a lighter layer so I can see a little bit of a gradient. And this is on the Arches Cold Press paper. It'll be for both of them. Um, so I like doing them that way. And now I've just got to figure out what order I'm going to put them in. So that's going to be my next thing to do. I'll probably leave some spaces in between here and there. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to do that and I will perhaps time lapse this or something like that. Okay, so I've sort of figured out where I want most of my colors to go. But as you can see, I've added in some Daniel Smith colors and I'm going to add in a couple Windsor and Newton just for the neutral tint and the lamp black. Um, I've got to go find that one. But I found it was just a little bit bare when I just put just the M. Graham watercolors down. And eventually I'd like to have this palette just all M. Graham, but I figured, well, I have the other colors now, why not add it into the palette now? And then I can use them and, you know, switch out as I need to. And another thing that I noticed, these two colors here, the Azo Yellow and the Hansa Yellow, so I had already had this one, and this one came in the 10 pack. They are super close, so I swatched them out here on this swatch card, and as you can see, like they're almost the exact same. So I was hoping one would lean a little bit more towards the warm and one would be a little bit more cool, but they both seem to be pretty cool. So that's where I decided to add in the new Gamboge from Daniel Smith. And then I thought, well, if I'm adding that in, I might as well just add in a few more colors here and there and sort of make it a custom palette, if you will. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put these colors in and then I'll let them set for the night and then I will swatch them out tomorrow. And um, yeah, and I might add a little bit more here and there, but I just kind of want to show you, you know, the setup and my thoughts on that.
Okay, so I just finished doing my swatches for this. Um, I just noticed some colors that maybe I would add in. Like I really like this quinacridone magenta from Daniel Smith and the Indanthron blue. That's a really nice dark like uh, purplish blue. So I think I might add that in. Maybe the phalo blue green. I mean, that, that one's pretty close, but uh, just a couple colors. Um, that I think I might add. And then once I get more M green paint paints, I will just replace them with those. One thing I did notice though, in my Winsor & Newton palette and my Daniel Smith palette, so this is my Daniel Smith palette, I had the lights going this way. Oh, there's my hair in the palette, gross. Um, so I had my lights here and you know my warms to my cools, my greens, and then my darks. But this palette was actually the opposite way and I thought that would confuse me maybe having the, the lights over here and the darks over there. So I kind of just, just put my nail in here and I thought, hey, can I switch it? And you can, this tray also comes out and then you have another tray down. But I mean, I, I guess you could just take it out and, and do, you know, take this with you if you didn't want all this, but that is another cool feature about this palette. So. I just popped this in the other way and now I have my lights on this side, my darks on this side. The The trays are a little bit um, different actually. They scoop this way instead of scooping that way, but I think I actually like this way better. So yeah, in case you mess up your palette, if you are using these palettes, you can always take it out and flip it around. So I like this design much better because now it matches my Winsor & Newton, my Daniel Smith, and now my M. Graham slash Daniel Smith palette. Um, because when I do my swatch sheets, I'll lay them like over here on the side, but I'll lay them, well, you can't see there, but I'll lay them this way. So it matches the way the, the palette goes. And I have my Daniel Smith done up this way too, so that when I look at it, I can just quickly pick what color I want. So now my swatches and my palette match up. Okay guys, I think that's it for today's vlog. I hope you liked it and enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to get the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to try to put out these vlogs maybe like once a week, once every couple of weeks because um, I did get some good feedback on the first one. So it's sort of just going to be the behind the scenes stuff 
I've got my dogs there. They want to be up on my lap right now, but uh, yeah, so I think I'm going to start the next vlog right now, and I've just got some um, boxes from Amazon that I'm going to unbox and uh, show you guys that, and I'll take you through um, the rest of the day today, and then maybe I'll put this up next week or something like that. So let me know if you guys um, do enjoy these, and thank you so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video.